Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's very special webinar, Stop Finder, the must-have tool that is unlike any other parent app. We have a really special program today. We're going to pack a lot of information in the next hour. Before we get going, we're going to give some folks just some time to, to file in. I'll be back in about a minute. All right, let's get started. We've got a lot to pack in here. Um, welcome again, everybody. My name is Rick DeRico. I'm the Public Relations Director at TransFinder. We are so glad you're here today. I can tell you that our CEO, Antonio Civitella, is chomping at the bit to talk about the latest developments. And uh, he just chomped at the bit. You didn't see it. You missed it. Um, but about the latest developments in our StopFinder app, it's amazing. And it just keep adding to the functionality. Um, before we do that, uh, so we have it's obviously our CEO, uh, Antonio Civitella, and Zach Morin. He's TransFinder's sales engineer. And they will give a brief overview of StopFinder, and then we'll bring in a very special guest, Neil Ireland. He's a director of IT operations at Apple Bus Company. Neil has a range of school districts across the country that are using StopFinder. He'll be able to share some very specific stories. Uh, but before we do that, I want to turn it over to Tony and Zach. Take it away. Hello, Absolutely. everybody. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Glad to be here with Tony. So, you know, before we let uh, Neil jump on and talk about his experience, we, you know, we do want to explain what StopFinder is, right? So StopFinder is our parent app. Uh, you know, obviously we wanted to make more than just a parent app. So really one of the most full featured solutions you're going to find for parents. And so we're going to talk about a lot of things today, including the easy enrollment we have for setting parents up, the ability to provide them with not only their bus information, but send and receive communication, brand new functionality we have with forms that you can work with. Uh, and we're going to look at how subscribers can get alerted when their bus is on its way, as well as be able to view attendance information. So we're going to cover a lot of that more in depth. Uh, but Tony, I wanted to check in with you, see if there's anything you wanted to share before we, we hand it back to Neil. Well, Zach, I want to welcome everybody. This is uh, such a Great product. Listen, we all know that there's so many products out there and uh, not that long ago, we were actually promoting some other products out there before we came out with this product. So we know there's some really good, fine products. They do a good job, but we also knew that there was other things that uh, our clients were looking for. So we really looked at the best of both worlds, what uh, other products were doing. And again, they're still doing a good job, but we thought, hey, we need to go above and beyond. And I think Today, we're going to try to identify those items. It's not just let's just track the bus, which is kind of cool. It's actually a bare minimum, bare requirement, but there's a lot more. So I'm really looking forward to this. And of course, I'm really looking forward to hearing from Neil, what he's doing with, uh, with his organization. So again, I want to welcome everybody. That's great. That's great. Thanks so much. Go ahead. Zach, you got some more slides here for us or no? You're good. No, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. All right, good. Well, before we introduce our very special guest, um, we do want to take a quick poll and just get a sense of those who are attending, what their priorities are when it comes to technology. So if you can see it up on your screen there, um, of these new student transportation technologies, which two are the most important to you? So you can pick two of those and then we'll, we'll come back in a second while I'm talking to Neil and we'll see the poll results. But again, the choices are student tracking, attendance, GPS tracking, find your bus, two-way communication parent app, or turn-by-turn -turn audio navigation. Again, you can pick any two out of those four. And while we're doing that, so I'm gonna turn, Neil, thanks so much for joining us. Now, you're our special guest, so you're in the hot seat, but if you wanna stick around for Tony and Zach's presentation, I'm sure that Tony may wanna bounce some questions off you. Are yeah. you okay to stick around for a little bit? Yeah, for sure, definitely. I always love to hear anything from Tony. Great, awesome, awesome. <laughs> So Neil, just for starters, just we, we know your title there, you're director of IT operations at Apple Bus. Can you just give me a sense a little bit about Apple Bus, the size, the scope, what, what your company is all about, and just a little bit of the, the, 
the scope of your operation? Yeah. So, of uh, course, Apple Bus Company is a contractor. We, we handle well over 90 contracts across the country. Uh, we're, we're actually in nine total states, all the way from Alaska, all the way down to uh, Alabama, all the way over Texas, uh, mainly in Missouri and Kansas as well. I've been around since uh, 2000 uh, with it as well. We, we've, of course, grown over several, several years. I've been with them for almost 10 years now. And just helping them grow and, and help them just find their, their little tidbits. Of course, we have TransFinder right there along with us, helping us grow every little bit away. Awesome. That's great. Thanks so much. So, you know, we there's been a lot of functionality um, over the last couple of years with StopFinder. We first rolled it out as StopFinder communication was the focus and uh, an easy to use two-way communication, districts communicating with their parents, parents communicating back with the district, snapshots, text, any, you know, um, documents even. Uh, and we're going to get to that in a second. But I think, you know, Tony made a reference already, the geo alerts. And I, I want to start with that, if you don't mind. And can you just tell us a little bit about how um, districts are using Stop Finder geo alerts? Um, and you, again, give me a sense of this, the districts we're talking about. You know, these, city, you know, rural schools, suburban schools, city schools, a little bit of the, the, the over, you know, give us a big picture here. Yeah, for sure. So it, overall, we have about 330 uh, total units uh, that are actually using the, the Stop Finder app. So, uh, I mean, we have a variety. Uh, it could be anywhere from an urban area that are using that Stop Finder, along with the GeoAlerts. We're using it in some areas that are a little bit more rural areas, and, and those tend to be a, a little bit sporadic as well. And, and it really is these parents uh, across the board are really the push behind it. Uh, of course, we have, uh, it doesn't matter where they're at, whether they're rural, whether they're urban, whether they're suburban, uh, it's, it's across the board that we're seeing these parents push forward, of course, then uh, school districts wise, of course, hearing it from parents, then uh, you, you have parents at games, you know, they go on a field trip somewhere, a football game, and they're having that game go on and a neighboring district sits there and looks at it and says, oh, well, well, looky here, I got this app I could track my kid on. I could, I could be able to communicate with the dispatcher at any time. I could, I could be able to take some uh, information from them from the district and send it over easily with them as well and, and get that information across to them. So it, it, it's, it's a lot of these districts becoming word of mouth. doesn't matter where, rural, urban, suburban, you name it. We, I, we have all three, actually, uh, that we can actually think of that, that between the 330 units. So a pretty good widespread of them. You know, I heard, um, I was talking to one um, transportation director recently who said one of the things he likes about Stop Finder Geo Alerts was that it actually would reduce phone calls from parents, you know, especially in the afternoon runs about, you know, their, maybe their student, their child's bus is running late and they can look at the app. They don't need to call the school. Have you heard any kind of stories like that? Yeah, for sure. It, it, I mean, we actually have within an urban area um, it's quite common that 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 buses are, are you know easily can be late because you have a parent that's sitting inside, uh, not wanting to to let their student out when it's raining. You know they don't want them sitting out at the bus stop until that bus gets a little bit closer. So a pretty good scenario, I, I would say we had a, an urban lot is is where lots of parents was raining coming down pretty hard. They didn't want to get their kids out to the stop, so they'd sit there and watch and monitor on the the stop finder app. They knew that bus was coming. They'd stand at that front door and and be able to say and you know oh there's the bus. Let's get them on there you know pretty quick out there. And then also you know those rainy days. We, everybody knows those rainy days. Sometimes those buses run late, and it's it's pretty easy to be able to send out a communication with it and and update those parents that on those rainy days say hey you know this this bus is starting to run ten minutes late because. Uh, one of the kids, you know, looked at it and said that, hey, I, I didn't want to be out at the bus stop right at the exact time. As we all know, that happens way too often. Um, Tony, you have some thoughts on this? Well, Neil, you know, you're talking about uh, parents. Uh, so one of the complaints we had before as we were trying to come up with a, you know, a better mousetrap, right? We want to come up with a better product that, that's out there. One of the complaints we heard is that some of our, uh, again, we were partners with some of these companies, and we still are that their alert zones could be really large. And of course, these really large ones would give you like false positive. In other words, you actually could go weave in and out of neighborhoods and say, hey, it's about to come here. And it's really not, it's pretty far out. Then they also made them too small. 
So I get to get this. So Rick and everyone, I, we've heard this so many times that parents will make them really tiny. In other words, it's like the bus is here. Now at this point, because they're almost using the, the app, like, you know, like give, give me an alert within a minute. Well, then buses were actually out there waiting because you know, they're waiting at the very last second. So there is, so we come up like, well, let's come up with a small, large, and also multiple geo alerts. And I think that's been really what we're promoting, like just pepper the entire area, almost like, no, like when the vehicle's down the street, call it down the street. It's almost, you get this alert because the, the worst thing can have, let's just say you have only one alert and you make them small, then you're going to be alerted like within a minute. And then at this point, the vehicle is, and if imagine like if the vehicle's like every stop, you're like about a minute, you start getting delayed and then just creeps up right to when you get to the So pool. then like the kid may right? not have time to finish the cereal. A minute, you don't have much time. You so don't. You're... And man, it's fast. You know, when you were talking, you know, maybe all of a sudden the thought came to mind. So we, uh, we you know, we're in upstate New York. So it's not just rain we're dealing with. We're also dealing with snow, like, you know, sub-zero stuff. So in a, in a way, I would think Stop Finder almost helps stop people from getting sick. Can we promote it? Our, our VP of marketing, can we say that we help like reduce sickness in among school children? We keep you healthy. We keep, Here we, we go. We keep so, people healthy. Keep That's a good healthy. one. So um, safe and uh, safe and healthy. And healthy. I like that's it. good. That's how you always end your notes. Ladies. Stay safe and stay healthy. Stay safe and healthy. All right. Very, anything I want to move on to stop finder communication. But before we do anything else you want to add on that uh, front, Neil? Well, you know, something I, I was thinking about, you guys are talking about the geo alerts and something that a lot of our, our parents take advantage of is actually setting up not only one alert, but multiple alerts. And not only are they putting up an alert for their their radius area for their, their location of their stop, but they're setting up the school and they're actually wanting to know that their students are making it to the school. So that way they know what they feel, you know, as a parent should, you know, I'm, I'm a parent myself. I understand completely. It, it's feeling that, that need in, in just a comfort knowing and safety of that your student has made it to school uh, from the bus. And so uh, that's a lot of communication we've had from parents is just them across the board saying, Hey, it, it's good to know that I, I feel better about my kids just making it to school. That's good. I know also some people will um, put a circle around the school for the afternoon run and say, okay, I know my kid's bus has left the station, so to speak. Yep. So they at least got that initial alert. And then like Tony mentioned, I think one of the things that Tony was so excited when he was first telling us about how this was very different from other parent apps was this is highly customizable. Um, so very good. Well, let's yep. move on to two-way communication. Uh, Stop finder communication. Two allows parents to communicate with the district. So say, you know, one example we've used in the past is just even say there was a, you know, when you made the, when you made the bus stops, um, there was no issue with a construction uh, zone. Maybe there's some construction taking place all of a sudden. So a parent may just want to snap a picture and send it along to, um, to the school district. And they can say, you know, can we move my child's bus stop for, you know, a period of time or whatever. Um, and then co conversely, the district can send uh, notifications, say, you know, the bridge is out and they can notify all the parents north of a bridge that we're going to have another bus taking your kids um, back home, something like that. Can you give me a sense of how Stop Finder communication is? And as many, feel free to share whatever stories you got on how, how it's been used. Yeah, uh, we actually have uh, an instance. So we're, we're headquartered pretty much in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, we have several districts out this way, of course. And one of the areas is, is actually uh, within uh, the, the Kansas City proper area. Well, there's always a lot of construction in, in Kansas City proper as far as the main streets. It's a, a lot of work that always seems to be done every year. Well, a lot of time the, the city's pretty good to update us what areas have been uh, needing construction and, and can be able to help us throughout. And we can always maneuver and route around it. Well, obviously there's those cases that there, every once in a while something slips through the cracks and we don't know construction is going on. Well, we did have a case actually of that of uh, construction happening where we weren't able to safely access an area. So we obviously needed to update those parents. Uh, what's great about that communication app part of it is I, I don't have to sit there and just say one bus. I could say an entire geographical area. So not only am I telling one school out of that school district, I'm telling several schools and several parents all at once 
to be able to inform them. So my dispatchers are very, very capable to be able to geographically grab up that certain geographic area, get those parents uh, involved with a communication to their app, let them know immediately. They immediately know it, it, we're not having to inform uh, parents on the other side of the district that would not have to worry, even worry about it. So we're able to pinpoint those parents and really let them know just because that construction causes a, a little bit of a pain and misery for them. You know, why does it have to be harder on them? We want to make it easier. So we were able to let them know exactly where to go for their, for their stop location. So it wasn't just saying, Hey, you're, you're, you're kind of out of luck. You have an availability to go down the street for your stop and, and be able to hop on the bus from there. That's so great. yeah, well, some good, safe stuff going for that. So and uh, so my title here is Director of Public Relations. Before I came here, I used to I was an education reporter at a newspaper. And one of the things we also highlight is the fact that with giving parents that, and guardians that instant access to their transportation department, maybe they won't go on social media right away to complain. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they won't go to the news media and they can actually direct their concerns to the people that can actually make those changes. I think some of the people just want to vent and that's, we understand that. I mean, you mentioned you're a parent, I'm a parent as well. Um, but it really, what we really want more than anything else is change. We want to make sure that the people who, who can make decisions and make changes are aware of those. And may, sometimes they may feel like the only way they can do that is if they go on TV or they go to the press. I think stop finder communication, one of the things we talked about very early on is that this can help you get that off your chest useful information that can be then implemented and, and make those changes. Have you heard any, we think that can help reduce faults or misinformation getting out there. For sure. Yeah. And that, that definitely helps parents to get more accurate information. I mean, that's a big piece for parents getting the right, the right information for the route. Uh, I mean, we have parents that, that obviously there's cases of, of split parents and they want that correct route information for them. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, those parents are, are going to, or those, those students are going to moms and Thursday and Friday, those parents are going to dads. Well, having that availability of the communication to allow those routes Monday through Friday to, to show that information uh, is pretty easy. Same thing if a mechanic, you know, mechanical error on the bus, something happens because it's going to happen. It happens everywhere. Uh, something goes wrong. Uh, then we need an easy communication for the parents to know that, the, their students are safely being transported through through another bus. And what's even nicer, actually, of them that to kind of bounce from that is we're able to immediately switch on there, that bus from one bus to another. So from parents' eyes, they're not able, it, it, it wouldn't even be a, a blink of an eye and they could be able to see that new bus already attached to it. And, and we can even communicate that pretty easily to them saying this bus has been moved from one to the other that way also. That's awesome. And I think that's the kind of stuff that helps really um, take people's anxiety, you know, remove their anxiety. You know, it's just this idea of keeping people in the know. Um, Tony always talks about you can't over communicate. Um, <laughs> Neil, can you stick a Tony, were you going to say something? Well, you know, I was going to say that you just took the word out oh, of my sorry. mouth because, you know, when uh, when the shutdown, the great shutdown happened last year, and of course we had communication, we realized we had this aha moment. It's like, well, you know, how are our clients going to communicate with parents? There's, you know, there's other ways. Well, so we actually start emphasizing communication really from the beginning. And that's really unique. If you look at it, the geo alerts, I think, you know, we obviously have some awesome functionality, but that's basically it's tracking a bus, but the communication aspect, which nobody really had this in this industry. I don't still think we're, we're far ahead of most companies out there. That's really the key. And I'm honestly, Neil, I love your stories about how, you're able to even like when you're substituting vehicles, you could just let them know, hey, don't look for bus 12. It's going to be bus 25. And, you know, some parents look at that number and, uh, you know, just because it came by my house doesn't necessarily mean it's my bus. There's a lot of buses going down the street. So that's a good one for sure. Good stuff. Thank you so much. We've just hit the tip of the iceberg. Tony and Zach have a ton of content. Talk about the latest and greatest um, functionality that, that we're, we're rolling out right now as we speak. Um, Neil, can you stick around? Because I know that Tony and Zach are probably going to want to pepper you with some questions as well or get your thoughts or your, your reaction to it in real time. So if you don't mind sticking around, before we, I hand it over to Tony and Zach, I'm going to ask Bridget if you could just bring on, there we go, just the results here. Um, again, of these new student technology, student transportation technologies, which two are the most important to you? 
Um, so it looks like uh, the number one is student attendance, student tracking attendance, followed by GPS tracking. So they are definitely in the right at the mm -hmm. right webinar, mm -hmm. uh, two way communication and then turn by turn audio navigation. So Very great cool. poll results. Thanks so much, Bridget, for your help on that. I really appreciate it. And now without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Tony and Zach. Perfect. But yeah, like Rick said, we do have a ton of features to cover. Uh, I want to go through a little bit what we're going to be talking about today, and then we'll jump in, start showing off some of the features, right? So again, Stop Finder, looking at our parent app, things that we want to make sure we're considering and, and highlighting for you guys here is going to be the low friction enrollment. We think the way that we sign up parents and guardians, caregivers onto our, our platform, really, really easy to do. So we want to talk through that process a little bit. We do want to talk about communication, right? We've heard already how important it is, not only during COVID, but, you know, dealing with uh, changing transportation needs, right? Dealing with uh, environmental impacts, things like that. Uh, Geo alerts is a big one. This is what parents are looking for out of this app. Where's my bus app? And then we're going to end with attendance, which turns out is the number one thing we're here to see. So good getting that feedback from you guys. We're going to end on that highlight there. Well, Zach, there's, there's so many feedback that I know we're going to get. And by the way, if there's any questions, please uh, use the question and answer section. Because I tell you, a lot of people said that you're interested in attendance. Be more specific. Are you looking for RFID cards, readers, or just really uh, app that you know, drivers are just using their finger to tap you know, to, on a tablet? I'm just curious to see. Or you just want to know, hey, the kid just got on a bus. So just curious, maybe give us some feedback on that. Because I'm curious, because it's such a wide range. Attendance means so much. We all know attendance. You just have a checkbox on a piece of paper. So please uh, share some of that with us. And uh, you know, all right, cool. That's it. Cool. So hopefully, uh, we'll keep an eye on those Q and A's as they come in. That's mm -hmm. the the place to ask questions. Cool. Let's jump into first our our enrollment process here. So we call it our our low friction enrollment, right? So this is our easy way that we invite parents, guardians, caregivers. We send it out uh, by email so that they can sign up. Once they get logged in, they're going to be able to see their child's daily schedule. Again, this is using a full calendar-based system. So I know dealing with a lot of districts, their Monday schedule, different than their Tuesday schedule, they're going to log in and see their child's full daily schedule here. And then we really want to empower our users to be able to use the system themselves, right? So they're able to log in, reset their password, and even invite additional subscribers. We call them subsubscribers. So if mom logs in, she gets invited, and she needs to give grandma or the babysitter access, we empower them to be able to invite those subsubscribers. That said, on the back end, the district is going to be able to manage all of this, right? So enabling, disabling users, uh, you're going to have that power to do it. But Again, the reason we think this is such an important process is having a parent app is great, but it works only as well as parents are able to get in and really be able to use it, right? And Zach, I got to add, I mean, this is really the big thing. Just because school district makes a, a pretty, you know, some of these uh, school districts are making a large investment on these type of apps. And uh, some of them in the past, they just wanted to have a checkbox. Yep, I got it. Now I have an app like my neighbors and so forth. But if you have a low enrollment, what's what's the value? You're really you're missing out. You're not communicating. So we want to, we thought like let's make it really easy for schools and organizations like Apple Bus to actually send that uh, invitation and make it easy. Neil could even find out. All right, thirty percent of of the population, and these are the thirty. They, he knows exactly who did not actually enroll, and he could just send them a reminder. Hey, by the way, you're missing out. So. Even though it's the first part, but man, we want as many parents and guardians on this app as possible. That's how you benefit. That's right. One thing I'll say that I really love about it is that it gives you all the information in one place, right? So you're not having to log in for each student that you have in the district. When you log into Stop Finder, you're going to see all of your students in one place, right? So if you've got five kids in five different bus assignments for each of them, you'll see this as you log in and, and see those kids. Even across districts, by the way, if, if, if some parents have uh, kids going to a private school in one district and the public another one, they actually could see all, if they're using the same app, all those kids show up on one account. So kind of cool. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, you know, I wanna say my next screen here is a, a short video. Just wanna show off. Look, we're putting this device in parents' hands. We wanna empower them to use it 
So built into this device, we've got tutorials here. So we're gonna talk about a lot of these features we see like GeoAlerts, attendance. Built into our app, we've got easy to use tutorials because we wanna make sure parents know how to use the features, they're empowered to use them. And most important, when you have such a full featured device, they're not calling the district saying, wait, how do I set this up, right? So that's built in that they can use those kind of easy to use tutorials here. Cool. Let's get into communication because I think that's a, a big one. Tony's talked about how important that's been, you know, the past year with COVID being able to uh, not only talk to parents, but let parents talk back with you. So we do offer two-way communication for districts that want to set that up. So uh, we're going to go through a scenario here about how districts can send communication to their subscribers. But if you want to, you can also turn that on, get feedback from your subscribers, say, hey, we need to move the bus stop. Hey, my student's not going to be attending. There's a lot of really good use cases for this. Work with, you know, if you're picking up a, a rural uh, district student that's 45 minutes out of your way, might be really good to know before the bus heads out that, hey, my student's not going to be coming in today. Yeah, I'm going to interrupt. You. There's some questions coming through right here. So I just want to see if we have time. Uh, and obviously, Rick, you're our timekeeper. So you just kick me underneath the table here if you have to. Um, Stacy's asking about parents obviously want to get confirmation and the student arrive at, at, the, at the, you know, get off the bus or on and so forth. Once really have an easy way for the drivers to also have that information. That's another product it's called Wayfinder. And I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a lot about that. And, and really, this is the, it's an app, but it's on a tablet. It, typically gets installed on a bus and there's a lot of good things in there. And I think there's a, a another question from David about uh, maybe you don't need an RFID reader. You could just use that, the tablet itself and then the driver could use that Wayfinder product to actually take attendance. It's almost like a checklist. And by the way, that does the turn, you know, the navigation and so forth. So I think that's a, a good one. And Stacy, right now it is not, it's only on a uh, on a smartphone, we do not have this product on a, a browser yet. You know, we thought, you know, remember, we got to keep thinking who the parents. Parents are usually, they're in the mid thirties, maybe early 40 year old. And at this point, huge percentage. Uh, so we, right now it's an Android or iOS device. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump into showing up a, a quick communication scenario, right? Really common one we see is I need to notify maybe students in a specific area of the map. So I wanna run through a situation where if uh, uh, buses are gonna be delayed, maybe because of a bridge being out, how can we notify some of those parents about that situation? So within our system, this is looking at the back end. This is our stop finder admin. This is a tool our districts can log in and see, and they can pull up their list of students and say, what students do I need to send notifications to? You could go ahead and map those students. You see, we've got geolocations for all of our kids. And there's a lot of ways that we can drill down this info. Maybe I want to drill down based on what school they go to, what grade they're in, what route they're on. Uh, but here in this situation, we might say, look, I want to do it really based on where students live. Neil gave us that scenario earlier too. Uh, if construction's happening, you really need to be able to look at the map. So what we can do is you can see we can highlight students that live in a certain area of the map. Right. In this situation, maybe everyone north of, north of the river, because of bridge outages, we're going to have delays for their buses. So we can select those students and just do a right click to send them an announcement. Again, we can drill this down as much as I need additionally. Right? Maybe it's only fourth graders that live north of the, the bridge that are getting notified. You're able to really filter this data easily here as you do it. Once you select your kids, you're sending out a message. Maybe you have messages you sent before that you want to reuse, <clears throat> message templates. Here, you can write up a brand new me message if you want. Let them know, hey, Freeman Bridge is going to be out. Uh, all students living north of it are going to have delayed times. Uh, I'll point out here within this interface, you can see if you need to schedule messages like this too, maybe this is going to be going out Friday because you know Friday, Bridge is going to be out, buses are going to be late on that day. There's so much use case for this right here. And I think, Neil, you brought up a couple, but there, we really... As we're learning more and more from our clients, there's just so many different use cases here. It really doesn't have to be just for transportation. Remember, our clients can load all the students, all of them, uh, even the one that are not, they're not transporting, uh, being transported you know, with, with, a, with the school bus. It could be for any reason. So obviously during COVID, our clients, uh, some of them use it for a lot of different things, where they're you know, announcing where there's a place to come and get meals and so forth. So this is not just for transporting 
students. It could go, it's beyond that. So it's a pure communication. Of course, I'm really going to get really excited when we talk about the forms and uh, that's going to come up soon. So that goes a whole nother level. That's right. Right. And again, with our stop finder admin, anyone in the district can be managing that system, right? So if it's not just transportation, maybe you're empowering staff at the schools to be able to send those messages, notifications. I'll just point out here as we wrap it up, we selected the students, we sent the message, and here's where the impact really happens, right? Parents are going to get that notification on their device, just like they would a text message. So whether they're in the app, outside the app, or right there on their lock screen, they can see those notifications come in. In fact, somebody anything. asked a good question about uh, these conversations being recorded. Uh, I'm not, Marty, I don't know if you meant this is being recorded, uh, this webinar, which we are recording and will be available of uh, community, community. But if you're also talking about the communications to parents and also if they're communicating back to you, it's all in your system. It's all in your database. So it's 100% recorded. And we're talking about mm-hmm. forms. Uh, again, I'm going to get all oh, really super excited about that. When they respond to you, we're even capturing their X, Y cord. In other words, when a parent or guardian actually responds to you, we even know where they did it from. Was it their house or were across the country? Well, maybe that's not them. So a lot of cool things. Oh, oh forms. I was going to say, you're talking about it enough. <laughs> Let's jump into it, right? So forms is, is the newest piece of communication that we're offering. And forms are such a thing that has become a big part of our lives. You know, I flew on a plane, I get a, a form survey asking how it was, I'm taking my cat to the vet, send out a form. So people are really used to interfacing in this kind of way. Now we've built it right into our Stop Finder app so that districts can build custom forms, ask what questions they need, and send those out to their subscribers to be able to get the feedback from them. And we give you a lot of capability with these forms. You can ask forms in a lot of different ways. If you want rating systems, if you need dates, times, true, false, have them choose from a list of information, you can build out these form questions. So it's got a really clean, easy to use interface here. And remember, it doesn't have to be just, just for kids who are, who are being transported. It could just be for any students. And by the way, then we find this uh, during communication, Rick, that some of our clients were actually using internal, they actually were using Stop Finder for the staff. Yeah, that's were they another, doing one, it? another right. one of those examples where our, our clients are so smart. They, right. they shared things with us that we could, like, hey, you know, we actually rolled this out to the staff. It's like, you did? Yeah, like, wow. So they actually added the staff member as a student. And again, you could have another data source. And they were communicating that way. Brilliant. That's right. I think there's so many use cases for forms. I'm almost hesitant to, to say use forms for this or that, because really, it's just a way to digitize whatever you're doing manually right now, right? You guys are sending out letters. You're making phone calls to get this info. This is just another tool to collect that data easily. I'll point out, I, I got a question here from Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne mentioned she's looking at form. Where do I find this? It's a great question because this is a brand new feature we just rolled out this past weekend to our production clients. We want to make sure that we're implementing these features well, that you're getting the most use out of them. So what we really encourage is for clients to reach out to their, their project managers. We're going to make sure that we get this set up for you, that we roll it out the right way that we're getting you everything that you need with it. So uh, if you're not seeing it in your stop finder yet, that's not unusual. Let us know. We'll want to make sure to get it set up and, and get it implemented for you. And it's no cost to you. So if you already have stop finder forms, is, is, there's no charge. And by the way, if you have there, if you have just a communication only without the geo alerts, uh, forms also comes with just communication. So we really want to beef up communication. We thought that was something that was, you know, we learned huge lessons, all of us, uh, you know, over 15 months that we over communicate, right? Can't over communicate. So we felt and forms are part of that communication tool. And by the way, as you'll see some other screens here and how all that data now you could do something with it. You could take That's action. It. So let's take a look at, you know, once you send those, uh, those forms out again, this is a, a way to digitize that kind of information, right? Right now you're keeping spreadsheets, you're writing it down on paper, you're calling up parents, you're getting mailers sent to you. Now you're going to be able to bring all of those results into a, a grid. You can view that information. You can share it with necessary parties. If you need to export it, right, you can send it to a, an Excel, a CSV file. Because I, I have heard, right, uh, look, not 100% of, of parents are going to adopt this. But Tony says you can't over-communicate. I'm sure if you're sending out a form, you're sending mailers to parents on this. You're calling them up as well. So this is just another tool in your toolbox to kind of integrate that data 
uh, as you get the results back. And I'll point out, like Tony mentioned here, your form results are going to capture things like the date and time. If you need X, Y coordinates, we're able to capture that info from forms, as well as obviously all their responses, uh, all of the, the assigned subscribers that are sending that in. Tony, I'll check in. Any other thoughts before we move on from forms? I know how excited you are on it. I mean, I am very excited. I mean, this right here is is really the big screen because this at this point you're collecting all that results, all that you know, you you spend all that time on and ca capturing all this data. It's the polling, right? All this information you're asking for. Not what are you gonna do with it? So I always I always uh, tell people, don't ask a question if you have no intention to ever do anything about it. It's 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 a silly thing, right? But if you're gonna start asking questions about whether it's how am I doing in service or just overall, you know, just question. Um, you got to have a plan. So you have to have a plan that you have to expect that the answers could be across the board. You could be the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you got to be prepared for that. So this is where the results really gives you a picture on, on how people answered. And by the way, low response also is an indicator. Remember that. Just because, like, oh, nobody's uh, responding. It must be everything's good. Sometime... Uh, when people are not really talking, they're not responding, that's not a good sign either. So these are all indicator and hopefully we're going to all work together and, and to really, obviously our, our job is to make our clients as happy as possible. Well, your job is to do the same thing too. Make your, your clients, which are parents and students. So we're going to work together on this. Yeah. And I think Ron does get a great question here before we move on from it as far as use cases. Uh, would this be a good way for parents to be able to notify the district about changes to their transportation needs. Absolutely, right? If a student uh, is going to be taking football uh, practice after school and isn't going to be riding the bus for a month, you know, go ahead and set up a form to let you know about those changes, changes to pick up, drop off locations. Look, I see it as, as something maybe for uh, an annual registration for registering for, for transportation needs, tons of uses that you can think of uh, for using forms here. Zach, you know, my son just graduated fifth grade. And of course, I think any of you guys are following me on social media. I've been making a big deal about graduation. This is a time of year and it's a lot of fun. By the way, did you see my FIO, Ryan? On a, on a, on, uh, my wife took a picture. FIO, I've been talking about figure it out. I think some of you guys have been hearing that, which I love that phrase. Uh, so my wife and I, uh, we would take turns. And honestly, she did most of the time. I really can't take credit. Majority of the time was my wife. We had a form. We had to fill out a form every single day for COVID purposes in order for my son to to get to school every single day. And so these are the type of things that you know COVID obviously going to be less and less, but there could be other reason, other uh, other daily questionnaire. But yeah, I think the use case is that we all learned that uh, if you make uh, transportation available to everybody, some of them want to take. They're going to say, yeah, I'll do it 50% of the time. But then many of you have actually completely changed. You went to a really, you have to opt in. Just because you're eligible doesn't mean I'm picking you, your kid up at school. So uh, at your stop, at your house, and then drop them off at school. It's the opt-in model. So the opt-in model is really a lot of our clients have obviously worked for their benefit because they can only fit so many kids on a bus. So the opt-in model worked. And I've been hearing a lot of clients are saying we're going to continue doing that because a lot of time they would make these routes that, you know, 55 kids could actually fit, but really only 20 a road every single day. So there's a, a big transition. Any comments, please let us know that. I mean, are you seeing that? Are you doing that on your side of your school? Are you are you going to, are you going to stick with the opt-in model or are you going to go back to, Hey, whoever's eligible, we're going to create a route for them. Let us know, please. Yeah. All Neil, right. what are you seeing? What are you seeing, Neil, about that? So, so I mean, it, it, in the form, like we you have said, it's 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 new. It's even new to me. It's something that's interesting to us uh, because we, as a company, like to know uh, efficiency wise. I mean, huge efficiency factor is knowing who's writing and who's not writing. Uh, that makes things, you know, we're able to predict a lot better on routes. We're better able to, to see what routes we need to make as opposed to what routes could be. Uh, you know, it comes around sometimes if we're just putting everybody on there as eligible, we're looking at, you know, more, sometimes more units than we need. You know, we want to help our, our school districts always save money. Uh, you know, everybody wants to save money. That's, that's never an issue. 
but it's always finding ways to make things more efficient. And, and what we're seeing is the forms makes things more efficient for data. We're able to, pin, not only we're able to pinpoint down more to what we want, but we're able to survey those parents to more detailed items and really get things to, to really focus in on what we need. So same thing, just transportation departments need to find more data than, than what regular enrollment may find. We're, we're sending out forms just to say, hey, what, what's your ride says? You know, is this, do you have an alternate address if it's allowable by the school district? Is there, is there certain things that are required that, that you need uh, beyond what we're, we're doing? So uh, there may be sometimes a parent just wants to communicate information about their student that necessarily might not be something that needs to be in an IEP or they can't be in an IEP, but they want to communicate that information about their student and haven't found a way. And, and we're seeing that as a, as a possible way to get just parents input. And, and you've said it time and time again, we're, we're all about, you know, over communicating as well. We want you to have as much information as possible as, as opposed to less information for sure. Definitely. And listen, Neil, that's one thing that we did uh, really in the early days, uh, you know, especially when we're, we're obviously we, we're going off, you know, we're, we're always trying to acquire a new client. I'm sure you guys are too. So how, how did you do that? You know, we always had this conversation over a year ago. How do you call a total stranger and say, hey, I got some software for you to buy, even though you're, you can use it, you don't want to talk to me. How do you do that? And I had to tell you, uh, a lesson learned, and we did this right away. You can't sell in those moments, you know, and, and I'm sure some of you guys are saying, hey, uh, you guys are trying to sell me. If we did, we, we were trying to really understand what was going on. And that's something that's a lesson learned that it's better to hear someone to say, hey, I know you can't buy from me, but the day you are, I want you to know I'm ready here. And of course, and here's where I, I personally, I, I remember people that would call me all the time to sell me things. And all of a sudden they stopped calling me like, oh, so you only call me when you know I was going to buy something. You don't want to call me when I when I'm not ready to buy something. And, you know, those things will stick out. So it's part of communication. It's not just how do you communicate? It's when you communicate is also just important. So a lot of lesson learned of communicating and just how people behaved uh, the past 15 months. So a lot of cool lessons that I've personally learned. I'm sure some of you, uh, some more people, Zach, are responding here. What do you got here? Yeah, one one good follow-up from Rhonda's. Uh, how do we know what parents have uh, have responded and, and what haven't? What you're not seeing in my grid here is you can filter by, uh, this is gonna show you a list of everyone that's received a, uh, a form and you could filter just to see which ones have responded, which ones haven't, uh, all that kind of info. So all that data is stored in the grid there. To make and Zach, couldn't you go from a student to the to the subscriber to what polls they re respond as you really could go right down to, to that line. So there's a lot of different ways. Yeah. That, of course. Exceptions, of course, all this is going to be in there. So the exceptions are in there. The total schedule, again, whether you have rough on a pro or, or plus, all that is in there. So it's a full calendar base system. It's a good one with exceptions. Well, yeah. I gave a sneak peek here, but I do want to jump into geo alerts. I know Tony talked about this check in the box, but this is a big thing parents want out of their, their parent app, right? They want to know where is the bus. So we don't want to just kind of check that box. I want to talk through some of the things that make our geo alerts unique, how we let parents kind of be empowered to set up the alerts and notifications that they receive. So talk about how we can configure those, some of the uh, benefits of having multiple alerts and, and adjusting alert zones, and then the option to have a live view for districts that want to be able to give that to them. I'll point out here, uh, just like we've talked about with notifications that you could see on my screenshot, how parents can receive these kind of notifications, just like a text message, right? Whether they're in the app, out of the app, if their phone is locked, they can get those pings letting them know as the alerts come in. So when I talk through a geo alert, what I'm talking about here is zones on the map that parents can set up. These are user created areas so they can decide where on the map they wanna get the notifications, how big of an area they wanna cover. And this is all important. Tony's talked about issues with uh, maybe other, other services that have too big of a map area and all of a sudden the bus is driving in and out, in and out of the zone and they're getting 20 different pings. That's not really helping them. They're still calling the districts. Here, you could decide, do I want to get notified when the bus is pulling up to my stop? Or do I want it at the end of the street? 
or do I want it 10 minutes away at the park? They can decide where those zones go and then they can get alerted as the bus enters, exits the zone using that GPS data coming off the bus. Right, big benefit here too is that ability to have multiple alerts. The reason and, and the use case I've heard back from clients why they like those multiple alerts is they don't wanna be glued to their phone, right? They don't wanna to have to sit there and say, where's the bus? Why haven't I gotten pinged? They can set up multiple alerts to say, hey, the bus is 15 minutes away. It's 10 minutes away. It's one minute away. That way as they're sitting there eating breakfast, getting the bags ready in the morning, they know how much time they have. They're kind of staying up to date where the bus is. Neil the other day mentioned to us uh, what a big benefit this has been for districts too, because it cuts down on uh, buses getting slowed down or being late, right? Parents know 15, 10, five minutes away. They know when they need to leave the house. It keeps buses running on time and, and running a, a little bit more smoothly. Neil, I, I don't know that you mentioned that this morning, but I just remembered our conversation from that the other day. You know, I got to say one more thing, though, Zach. I wonder uh, now that, I mean, our clients that have adopted this technology, and of course, uh, the drivers are now know that, all right, it's not just the back office or seeing, seeing my, my driving behavior if I'm late or early and so forth, but now parents are even more, I wonder if that added pressure is making drivers a little more you know, um, knowledgeable. And remember, you want their feedback because maybe you're building some routes that are just not even, they're not practical. And before it's like, ah, they'll be okay. Rick is going to be okay. He's going to realize that I'm doing my best and, uh, you know, only he's looking at the data. But now parents are seeing and they're, they're seeing this live and every single day I'm like five, 10 minutes late. Well, does that maybe make, you know, Rick, maybe they mix that driver speak up saying, you know, before it was just you and I know you, you, you knew what I was doing, but parents don't know what I'm doing. And guess what? Let's fix that time. That way it, I don't look bad. So maybe it makes people speak up a little bit. I don't know. Right. I think this data is huge. You know, we're talking a lot about the parent app, but obviously transportation wants us info too, right? They want to know where the bus is driving, when it's driving. Uh, parents want that info as well. Uh, you know, we'll see that with attendance too. Yeah, there's a, a good question here from Stacy that came in. Look, you may want to limit what parents can see. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you don't want to be able to track, have parents tracking the entire bus route, you don't want them seeing other stops along the route, you can control what information that parents are able to see. So in my screenshot here, you're getting a ton of info, right? You see the full route, you see other stops. I actually see the bus here on the road. You can manage that if, uh, if you want. Parents could see just their stop, just their home location and kind of cut all that additional info out. So that's all managed on your, your back end there through Stop Finder Admin. And also as an administrator, you'll know who actually set up GeoAlerts and how many GeoAlerts they've created. You actually get to see a lot of that information of what they did. Last big piece I, I wanted to touch on with GeoAlerts is, look, we also know buses are driving around the, the neighborhood all day, right? They have field trips, they have midday runs, they've got all of this other information. So that's why we allow parents to go ahead and set time alerts, right? When do you want to be able to receive these, these kind of geo alerts? Uh, so you can limit it to, you know, when your bus is, is picking up in the morning, dropping off in the afternoon, the rest of the day, don't be pinging me, right? So they could set those time ranges there. And when we're talking about the kind of user configurability, I've got one more video here too. You do have that option uh, with our app to turn on a live view. Right? Some districts might want parents to actually see all that info, see where the bus is. Look, if you want to turn that info on, off, you can manage it. Same with, like I said, some of the other functions like seeing the stops, seeing the routes, all of that can be managed. So live view is a nice feature, but you know, I, I could see some districts maybe not wanting, sometimes less is more with, with the information. And I got to tell you, Zach, showing the other stops I, I actually get that one. Maybe that one you're not going to be completely like, I don't want parents to see the other stops. I get that. Uh, so again, it's just a little checkbox. You want the other stop to be shown or not. But the path, the path that the vehicle is taken, uh, I remember when we start talking to clients, like, oh, no way I want that. Like, well, you're not hiding that. It's like, it's really easy to know which way the you, the, the, the buses look. Last time I checked, they're, they're not easily camouflaged. You could tell where they're going. So why not show the blue path? I get you maybe you don't want to necessarily show the other stops because maybe I have parents saying, all right, Johnny, 
you're going to be late here, but why don't you go over there? Because there's another stop there. I get that. Again, it's not, it's easy to find out if parents really want to know all the different places within, you know, half a mile of my house, how many other places that same bus stops. I could just find, find that out if I'm going to do that. But the path, I think a lot of people are showing the path now, Zach. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's right, right? Especially if you want to really empower them to get the most out of multiple geo alerts. Look, if I want to set up a geo alert 15 minutes away, uh, it's going to help to know where the bus is 15 minutes away. Yeah, that's right. Cool. All right. My last one that I really wanted to touch on here, and I know this is a big one for us, is attendance, right? So this, like forms, is a brand new feature that we're just rolling out here. But uh, big benefits here. Parents can receive those notifications. Again, we've shown it with communication, with geo alerts, the case here with attendance as well. So right on their phone, they can get pinged, let them know, hey, your kid got on the bus safe. We take that even further. We let parents see the historical attendance info too. So if I want to go back and look at what was last week like, and then we love maps here. Uh, we allow you to map all this information as well. So we've got a screenshot here that just shows off what the student card would look like. If the parents logged in, they can get notifications here saying, hey, your kid swiped on the bus. You're getting that geo alert there saying, hey, the bus departed just two minutes ago. So you can see all that info in one place. You're not having to jump around the app. Uh, really easy to use kind of interface here. So Zach, I just want to remind everybody, there's actually three ways to do this right now. You could do this with an RFID reader and, and that's it, with a card and a reader. The other way is to actually have the, the reader with Wayfinder. And at that point, I think, I think that's, um, uh, I think that was a question about, you want to make it easier for your drivers. And I think Stacy, I think is it Stacy? I forgot who mentioned it and I'll look for it. I think it was someone else um, that asked about the driver, making it easier for the drivers. That's Wayfinders for the inside. But then the other way with Wayfinder, without the card, I'm going to call it call it the fat finger, right? Just use your, your tap with your ticket attendance. And then they get notified. I'm not a big fan of that because the driver could make a mistake and uh, maybe mistapped a kid or, you know, forgot to tap a kid or tapped in another kid. And all of a sudden, a parent would go, what? Uh, my my son got on a bus today. He's home sick. So that's the only thing about that. There's a higher probability. But again, you guys decide that, of course. Yeah, definitely see some uses for, for mm -hmm. that. Maybe with the the smaller buses only picking up a few students. We had a good question here, too. If you are using a card, can you link that for the, their school card for things like lunch and library? We work with a great card partner that develops cards that can have all that info, right? It can have barcode scanners, RFID, student pictures, be integrated into your entire district there for all of their card uses. That's right, that's right. And there's there's multiple chips could go on there. There's a lot of different things. And we're also looking at uh, other technology, perhaps barcodes. I've noticed a lot of people are looking at barcodes. I don't you know, they're a little bit less expensive. And you know, those cards do tend to be expensive. So if you have multiple use, multiple use for those cards, uh, that makes a lot of sense, of course. Monica, I have another good follow-up too. Before we look at a few more screens of attendance, uh, is Wayfinder required to be able to take attendance? It's not required, but it is one way, right? So with Wayfinder, it does give you the option of just fat fingering. You don't even need an RFID reader. Uh, but separately, if you do have an RFID scanner on your vehicles uh, with maybe GPS equipment, things like that, you can scan that way and bring that info in as well. So it doesn't require Wayfinder, but it is an option. It's just, it's really become a very popular product uh, as we're re been releasing that product now. Uh, you know, it took us a little bit longer than we expected. Wayfinder is several years. And so we released our, our first batch uh, not that long ago. And of course, now we're in a big release mode of that product for both Pro and then Plus is coming out pretty soon. Those are the things that a lot of our clients have been asking for really it's not just the left and right navigation it's all that it's really taking that digital route sheet, you know taking that route sheet and making it on a, put it on a tablet and uh, we're now providing and one of the companies where we actually partnered with is zonar and we're able to provide you you know directly those devices whether from a gps device the reader the tablet and which is a beautiful samsung device some cool things and we're we're always testing that out. We're doing things ourselves with that. But I, I, I think we, we looked at how do you do navigation? If you're doing navigation, again, I'm talking about Wayfinder now. Navigation has to come from the routing company. And there's a lot of companies that are trying to solve navigation, which is 
I get it. We didn't have it before. We can't knock it. It was it was okay, but okay doesn't work here because navigation has to be from the same map that you route with. So that's a key. Uh, you're making all those changes on a, on a map and all of a sudden the navigation system has no clue what you just did. Makes no sense. So I want to, I know this is a different, I know, ouch, that was my knee. Rick. I was going to say, go, go you know, look at the YouTube. Tony and I talked through Wayfinder last <laughs> month and it was, uh, it was that's great. right. And it'll be more to come. I think that's a, that's another great product. Of course. We, uh, I, I just had a few more slides on attendance, but Stacey had a great question. With student uh, stop finder attendance, can you run reports to see who rides, who doesn't ride? Look, we're talking really about the parent application here, what we let parents see. But I agree, there's a lot of these uses that transportation would want to see that same information, right? Because maybe you do see a stop that you have set up that, look, it turns out you're getting attendance info and nobody's getting picked up at that stop, right? Maybe you want to remove it. Uh, so yeah, the same information we're sharing with parents. Absolutely, I see good use cases for sharing it with transportation. You have tons of data. We have tons of data in your system. So uh, whether it's some CAN reports, or remember now with Plus, we have custom report riders so we could create any reports, these dashboards. Uh, you know, there's really multiple stops, right? There's a stop that's called, we call it missed stops. You know, you just missed a stop and you know, one, you know, wonder why that parent just keeps calling, uh, you forgot to pick up my kid. Or, or two, an unplanned stop and unplanned stop is not what we, you know, nobody recommends that because it means it's unsafe. Nobody validated. That's a good place to stop. So unplanned stops to me are the worst. Second worst, you get to a stop either too early or too late. Those are, you know, we want to know that kind of stuff. So this is all the plan versus actual, but all this stuff is what parents are seeing exact, but you have all that data, all that rich data, in, in, in your fingertip, again, what are you gonna do about it? And that's always, if you're gonna look at this data, you gotta have a plan to do something about it. All right, so just to wrap up with attendance here, uh, cause I think we're just about at the end. I did just wanna highlight those notifications, sending those out to parents, how important that is, right? The app's able to push that to their phone. You know, mom's already had it off to work, things like that. She could get those pings, say, hey, your student's gotten on the bus safe. And then what I really love about this, where I think, uh, attendance really takes it to the next level is how you can view that historical info. I don't need to just look at what's happening today. You can look at this week, this month, this year. And at any point, you can tap any of these uh, attendance records here. It brings you right to the map, right? It's going to show you exactly when and where the attendance is happening. Where's my kid getting on the bus? When is that happening? You know, really empowering parents to have all the information they need. And also go back to our clients also know, right? They know where the planned stop was and where that student that was planned, scheduled to that stop, where they scanned. If it's a different location, then you're going to ask what's going on. Is it really, is the driver not stopping at the planned location? Are they really going down the street? And then all of a sudden you realize like there's a bunch of kids actually getting out to that same stop. What's going on there? Maybe the driver knows a lot more than you guys know. And by the way, this is where open... That, that communication line with the drivers because they're the ones actually right there. You know, they're on the road. They see the safety aspect that maybe you don't see. And they're, you know, maybe again, they're, they're saying, ah, no one's going to know about it. But now all of a sudden, everyone's going to know about it. Everything's going to stand out. So that's always something uh, we always tell our clients, of course. But that's a great looking map right there. You know exactly, again, the parent knows exactly where my kid use their card right at that location. That's it. So right on the screen here, you could see you got stop information, the attendance swipe where that's happening, and then obviously their, their home location in there. Tony, that brings me to what I had to cover today. I think we're just about here on time. Anything that you wanted to kind of wrap up today with? I don't know if we, did we answer Monica's question about that? You do not, Monica, you don't need Wayfinder to take attendance. I, I don't know if I, I know we talked about attendance, but it's not required. I think it's it's a cool thing. Wayfinder, again, I know we're, uh, it's one, our, our latest and newest product out there is Wayfinder. So we're going to hear a lot more talking about that, but it's not required. I think, you know, obviously it's an investment on your part uh, to for drivers and so forth. This is more for the kids. They use the, their cards and that's it. 
unfortunately, there's no indicator. The driver doesn't know, is this the right kid or not? With Wayfinder, they know everything. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You're not a wrong bus, kid. Get off. So that's really the level of Wayfinder. And again, Zach, Rick, John, sounds like we don't have to have a Wayfinder pretty soon here because I feel like we talked a lot about Wayfinder. (laughs) Uh, Like 25% of our conversation was about Wayfinder, but they are together. I mean, obviously all of our Finder products, they all work together, of course. They're the perfect pair. They are the perfect pair. Um, Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly, spaghetti and meatballs. So... Ooh. I want to I want to close the close everything out here with a couple quick things. One is I want to thank Tony and Zach. Awesome presentation, Neil. Really appreciate your real use examples here. Um, super helpful. Um, before we we close out, I want to let everybody know that this is being recorded and we will have it on our homepage, transfinder.com, so you can come back to this. I also want to know if you have been using StopFinder communication or geo alerts and you want to tell us your story because we're always looking for people that we can feature in webinars, we can do white papers on, please email my story at transfinder.com. That's my story at transfinder.com. And you can also, you have a question about it. You don't have it and you want to learn more about it. We address, I think every single, you guys did an awesome job answering these questions in real time. If you still have a question, um, just again, email my story at transfinder.com and we'll make sure that gets to the right people to get in touch with you. Before I say goodbye, Tony, would you like to say one last takeaway that people who are listening to this, they either going to go back to their staff, they want to go back to their district leadership and say, I just came off this webinar and we, we have to get stop finder. What do you want them to know? What do you want them to go and tell their leadership? I think that the takeaway, you know, you guys are all seeing things uh, on social media, parents right now, they're going to the board meetings and they're not holding back. Uh, and I don't think that's going to change. I think it's going to be, it's going to continue. Uh, some of the board meetings are completely been disrupted with the, some of the parents coming in. And, you know, they just want to be informed. And I think it's my takeaway is more information. Keep parents informed. As a parent, I want to know what's going on. I know if I disagree, then I'll voice my opinion. But if you don't let me know what's going on and I have to hear from the grapevine, and that's where I think parents just freak out. So my takeaway just communicate with parents. As a parent, and many of you used to be parents and some of you all are still parents, think about it. If you want to know before, you have to hear all over the news. So if, if it's style finder, that's going to be the way to communicate, then great. If it's other ways, but I'm just going to tell you, summer is here. We know it's all over the news now with the parents going to these board, board meetings and really voicing their opinion. Why? Because they weren't given time to think about it. So I just my takeaway, please communicate with parents as much as possible. All right. As your PR director, Tony, I cannot agree with you more. Good. Good. (laughs) So thank you everybody for all. Thank you to all of our attendees for spending time with us again. Thanks to our uh, special guest, Neil and Tony and Zach. Awesome job. Have a great day, everybody. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Thanks. Bye.